everyone and welcome back to Spooky Book Club. So today we are reviewing and discussing the book of the month for June which was called The Night Will Find Us by Matthew Lyons. And if you're new here, first of all, welcome to Spooky Book Club. So what we kind of do around here, just really quickly before I get into this. So on the 7th of every single month, and the reason I do the 7th, by the way, is because I feel like the first week of every single month just flies by. So I'm never prepared. <laughs> so the seventh of every single month, basically do a whole spooky book club extravaganza where I post two spooky book club videos. So the first video is like the one you're seeing right now, which is a review and discussion of last month's book. Um, and I basically just review the book really quickly. And then we get into the discussion part where we talk about spoilers, favorite characters, favorite parts, uh, scariest parts, all that kind of stuff. And then uh, we can discuss it down in the comments so you can either respond to kind of what I talk about or you can do your own review or disagree, agree, whatever you want to talk about. Or if I missed something that you really liked in the book, uh, we can discuss all of that down in the comments. All right, so then the second video I post on the 7th uh, is announcing the two spooky book options for that month. So there should be another video out right now that is uh, July Spooky Book Club where I announced the two spooky book options for that month and you can go vote for which book you want to read over on the community tab which there's more information on that video but also I'll put the community tab the link down in the description box in case you're looking for it. But anyways okay so today <laughs> let me get a sip of my my water. It is so hot. <sighs> My air conditioner went out completely, like wasn't even pumping cold air. And we need to get a new air conditioner, which I don't even wanna think about right now, but we have to. So we have to get a new air conditioner. But in the meantime, until they can install it, we have, we've like, they kind of did a temporary fix on it, but it's really messed up. So if I'm sweating or panting excessively, <laughs> that's why. Okay, anyways, okay, so we're, we're talking about, what are we doing? Oh. Wrong thing, I'm holding the wrong thing. We're, we're doing a book discussion and review uh, for what, what was the book called? Uh, the Night Will Find Us. And um, this one, okay, I'm gonna do a really quick review. I don't wanna get too into it because it's pretty much one of those books that takes off pretty quickly. So I don't wanna give anything away, but uh, I, I will just do a general, very quick review. So the book is about this group of teenagers who get out of school for summer and they're planning on going on a camping trip they don't, uh, they kind of lie to their parents about it and say there's gonna be chaperones and stuff, but they kind of just go off on their own and go off into the woods for this camping trip. And basically within the first 2.5 seconds of the book, all hell breaks loose. But first of all, this book I feel like was perfect for summer. If you're looking for a summer themed type of spooky read or horror read, it was very much horror. So if you're looking for like, uh, bumps in the night, little spooky ghosts. This definitely was not one of those books. This one has a little bit more gore to it, a little bit more murder to it, <laughs> but it very much has that summer feel, like teenage summer, kind of like a, a Friday the 13th meets Cabin Fever meets Evil Dead, um, but none of those at the same time. Like it's, it's none of those and all of those, but you know, just the whole going out into the woods and I was a group of friends and then the friendships unraveling and a bunch of doom and gloom. You don't know what's next or who's next kind of thing. That's very much the feel of this book. So definitely give it a read, if, especially if you're into any sort of kind of camping, uh, kind of a little bit of gory, little bit of supernatural sci-fi, little bit of an occult feel in there. Um, if you like any and all of those things, I feel like this is this is a good one. Anyways, okay. Moving on to the discussion portion, I'm gonna, uh, if you haven't read the book yet, I'm gonna let you go. Unless you wanna hear the spoilers, then you can stick around if you're not gonna read it and you just wanna hear some spoilers. But I'm gonna give you a second, I'm gonna take a drink of my water. I'm getting all uh, gargly, like guttural death metal sounding, <laughs> I guess, which is totally appropriate for this video. So, so we're gonna get into this, the discussion, what did you guys think of The Night Will Find Us by Matthew Lyons? What did you think? Let me know in the comments. Um, I have some mixed feels about this book. So I really enjoyed it because I loved that it was kind of, it was a summer book. It's summer. It's kind of got that whole feel, um, you know, like I talked about earlier that, you know, Friday the 13th, Evil Dead, Cabin Fever, maybe kind of feel where it's the group of friends that go out into the woods and 
it, it escalates pretty quickly and then once the first death happens it just spirals out of control and everybody dies well I mean that's not what happened in this book but you know basically everybody dies or weird terrible things happen to everybody um, and I felt like that was the the best part of this book was that sense of dread that kicked off right away to where even when I put the book down like if I had to make dinner or do something I would still feel it it would just linger and I I, w I almost didn't want to pick up the book again because I was like I don't know if I want to know I don't want to know who's next but then like you know I wanted to pick it up at the same time so I really enjoyed that aspect of the book but the one thing I, about this book I will say and I'm saying this because I don't know if anyone else agrees with me or felt this too um, but I felt like when I was reading the book, I really enjoyed it. Like I enjoyed reading, like the process of reading the book. Um, but after the book was done, it, there was nothing like, I feel like this discussion is going to be a little bit more difficult because normally in the discussion portion, we're reading a book that has a lot of twists and turns or something happens that either makes me really excited or really annoyed. <laughs> Um, and I can't wait to come on here and talk about it and I'm like oh my gosh what did you think of this what did you think of that with this book I felt like everything made sense so it was really good it was enjoyable and would recommend it but I don't know if I recommend it as a book club book you know because I felt like a lot of the things that happened just made sense like you know dude goes into a cave and eats this fruit that everybody knows he shouldn't be eating and everyone's yelling at him through the book and then he comes back later as a flesh-eating mutant situation. And I feel like that, yeah, that made sense. I mean, it wasn't mind-blowing. Okay, yep. Um, the dude uh, coming to the woods to bring his friends there to look for his dad. Not surprising. Figured that was the case. And when he found his dad, I just didn't feel like any of it was super shocking. There were a lot of twists or anything. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to talk about this kind of thing. Um, it was it was kind of one of those books that I thoroughly enjoyed as I was reading it. And then when it was done, I was like, okay, next book kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else felt like that. So I, I'm going to probably struggle a little bit with this discussion because there was not a lot that I was totally excited to talk about with this book. So I'm gonna start with the very beginning because I think the fight with Parker, everything, this kind of like set the tone. So I, I mean, I think, what was the argument between, I know Parker got in that fight, but what's the other guy, Nate? Yeah, I said, wow, Nate is a dick. And I still stand by that. I feel like Nate was really poking the bear in this situation. I think Nate was totally out of line. Um, but, um, and so was Parker, I guess, kind of shooting his friend in the face. But I mean, it was no surprise at the same time. Once that happened, it just went full force into the story. And I don't want to go step by step through the whole entire book because there was just so much that happened. Some of my favorite parts, I guess, I'll, I'll start there. I really liked the whole thing with Nate, uh, or sorry, uh, was it Nate? Yeah, Nate being the ghost, haunting Parker, and following him through as he goes into the town and how he goes and looks for his dad. I, I think I made a note early on um, when, what was it? Uh, Parker said that Nate never really laughed like that. Like he didn't laugh or like had a different laugh or something like that. Uh, I had this feeling that that wasn't Nate, that there was something else uh, following Parker around. I wasn't too shocked when that was revealed. Um, but it did suck because I think at that point I had kind of gotten it was that really weird feeling that you get when you don't want to like somebody and like, you know, clearly Parker and Nate had a, like it, things were not good at all. Nate was a huge a-hole to Parker and Parker obviously shot Nate. So this is like a whole dynamic that was very, that was a whole toxic dynamic. So I felt a little bit guilty. <laughs> liking Nate again or liking the Nate and Parker dynamic again but I also I feel like that's kind of what the author wanted was trying to kind of you know do that to you where you start feeling empathy and start really liking this dynamic by the by the time we realize Nate isn't really Nate I really wanted it to be Nate it wasn't surprising I wasn't totally shocked because Parker had kind of hinted at it before um, but I was sad about it because I wanted, I wanted it to be Nate. And so it added to that once again, that other, it was like another layer of heaviness that, oh my gosh, they really are screwed. This is not 
this there's nothing good about this situation but i did enjoy the thing with adam going into the cave and eating the forbidden fruit I did like that part i thought it was a little bit creepy and then he comes back and he's or no they find him and he's all like bent up or folded up or whatever or he like distorted or whatever was happening i thought he attacked chloe or something happened or no he stabbed her that's right with the with the like piece of a branch or whatever um, but yeah, I think, uh, oh yeah, and then Nikki pulled, okay, that part was pretty good. When Adam, the mutant version of Adam, stabs Chloe, and then Nikki pulls the stick out, and then Chloe's got this whole, you know, thing, like a whole wound. I thought that part was pretty good, I will say that. And from there, I don't know what the couple's name was, but they kind of annoyed me throughout the whole thing. What were their names? Like, I wasn't totally... Uh, who is it? I don't even think I wrote it down. Josh and Nikki. Nikki, that's her name. I don't know. I wasn't really into or that dedicated to Nikki or Josh, either of their characters. I kind of thought, I don't know. I thought that their characters were not as interesting as some of the other ones. Like Nate was the total a-hole. Then you had Adam who basically ate the forbidden fruit, which is, of course, ironic or not ironic and then you have Parker who is clearly like you know he shot his best friend and he's on the run he's looking for his dad so you have these complex characters and then you just have Nikki and Josh which I felt were very surface level like they just weren't my favorite and maybe other people identified with them I just felt like they were when they died I was just like okay they died kind of thing I thought they were gonna die a lot earlier I didn't even think they were gonna make it to the point they made it to move on like I also really liked the part where uh, Parker and Nate go into the town that's just basically totally abandoned it kind of reminded me of that one book we read by Darcy Coates if you've been here for a while um, where he went into that abandoned town but goes into this abandoned town then finds this like basement of the church and there's all these things like there, there was kind of that occult feel in there and I, I did dig that um, and then he finds his dad like I, I did like that whole that whole part as well but I think a part that maybe was missing for me is you had all this stuff going on I don't feel like there was much of an explanation as to why the woods were like this like the white trees coming up uh, just the random town and I think it insinuated maybe that it had to do with the reverend all that kind of stuff uh we did learn about the body of water like the the lake thing but I feel like there was still a lot missing like a lot of stuff wasn't really explained like things that played a big part in like the fruit like what's what was the fruit was it like a ghost fruit like no one else saw it. Okay, but there's this emphasis on these white trees and I don't wanna say like it was like the veins or like the bones or whatever that were kind of flowing through the woods. Was it the Reverend or was it the girl? I guess I just didn't understand like it was really fast paced and really exciting. But then you have this whole other thing and that's just like, why? Like, why are these white trees here? Where did this fruit come from? Who's the weird sli person slithering around in the cave? Who is that? Like, uh, Adam, I'm assuming, got possessed by the Reverend? I, I mean, I don't feel like any of this was clear at all. Or maybe I just totally missed it because I was all caught up in all the gore and all the action-packed stuff happening. And I think there could have been something really cool, like possibly a big twist or just like a big um, revelation, possibly. It may have been a missed opportunity a little bit to go a little bit deeper there, but... I guess to wrap it all up, we can talk about the ending. I know this is gonna be kind of a quick discussion, a little bit all over the place, which I guess I'm like that in general, but this book was kind of all over the place. Uh, but so when Chloe goes down the water stream or whatever, river, body of water, whatever it is, and goes um, and ends up kind of washed up and they find her. First of all, I didn't think she was gonna make it there. I thought they were all gonna die at some point, but Chloe survived. And then she goes back in the end and goes and sees the burned uh, area, goes and sees Parker, who um, Parker basically had to die. Parker blows the whole place up with all the gunpowder and that kind of linked back to Nate and, and how all of this happened. Like, I really liked how a lot of things went with this book, but there were some other things that kind of were um, maybe missing a little bit or just not, there weren't a lot of twists and turns, not a lot of surprises. So I guess 
overall for the millionth time, I enjoyed the book, really enjoyed reading it, really couldn't put it down, especially towards the end. I, it was one of those books where as I was like, I was letting my dogs out or I'd go like cook dinner or whatever. And I have the book here and I'm like stirring whatever, or opening the door to let my dogs out. I was hooked. Like I could not stop reading this book. After the book was done, I was just kind of ready to move on from it. Like I, there was nothing I really wanted to discuss. Nothing. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait. What do we think? I, this is just totally mind blowing. I can't believe this happened. Just didn't like, I, I didn't get my discussion juices flowing. So here we are with this very all over the place discussion. So I think as a book club book, it wasn't my favorite, but I think as just like a leisurely everyday read type of book, I really enjoyed it. So um, that's kind of my take on that. <laughs> Um, I guess just in general, let me know what you thought in the comments, anything you liked, your favorite characters, your favorite parts, parts you weren't crazy about or what you loved, didn't love about the book kind of thing. Anyways, July Spooky Book Club should be up right now. Um, I'll put the link to the video in the description box for you. Um, anyways, uh, that is it for this video. Hope you've been enjoying Spooky Book Club. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. Say hey, ghoul, hey, down in the comments because you know I love talking to you. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.